Hey, it's your pal Terry Bean with another fun and exciting episode of Business Growth Time. Today, we're joined by Drew Linsalata. But before we introduce him, I got to talk to my little friend, high school pal, this lovely lady who might want to handle your social media for you. Actually, you might want her to handle your Facebook advertising for you. Janet e. Johnson, where today the E stands for, uh, let's see. Engrossed. Engrossed. Yeah. Okay. I feel like we're, we're going to be engrossed in discussion and in conversation. Oh, there you go. I thought we were going to say we're engrossed in podcasts because we've been to it. This is not the first one we've done today. So. <laughs> and then, yeah, Terry had an interview already this morning. So, yeah, we're, we have a, quite a day today. So that's awesome. But it's great to batch things too. So we're no. grossed in, engrossed in conversation. Well, let's get engrossed in conversation with Drew. But first, I want to introduce him so that you can understand where he comes from, but then we'll kind of let him tell his own story too. So Drew is the owner of Helix Interactive. He's an expert in trusted technology, problem solver in WordPress and web hosting space. Uh, he is the founder and CEO at Helix Managed Web WordPress hosting. Helix provides fully managed hosting that makes WordPress faster, more reliable, more secure, and even easier than you'd ever hope it would be. So welcome, Drew. And we want to talk about all this WordPress stuff today. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you guys having me on. Very cool. Yeah, very cool to have you. So how did you get into this space in the first place? Sure. So I have been like my formal education is architecture. So, you know, people that are my age, I'll just leave it at that. There, there <laughs> Our was, age, probably. I, I think we all seem to be around the same age, I'm going to guess. But yeah. there was no internet, you know, when we were going to school and stuff. So I have a degree in architecture. And after being in that for, after graduation, after being in design and construction for, you know, a few years, I kind of thought, like, I really want to get involved in some sort of technology stuff. Um, and then we, we start, me and a partner started building an online service. This is how old this is. Remember online services like Prodigy and AOL for architects and engineers and things of that nature. We were way, way, way too early. We burned through all kinds of money before anybody even knew what that was. And we morphed into an internet service provider and the first dot com boom. And then that morphed into kind of a data center co-location hosting company. And, you know, fast forward from like 1996 all the way to here. And I've been in the hosting business now for many, many years. And we were hosting a lot of WordPress and we were asked to solve many, many WordPress problems, the same bunch of problems over and over and over and over again. So with years and years of experience with that and just being asked to solve the same problems again and again and again, we decided, well, we should probably find a way to stop those problems from happening to begin with. And about two years ago, we started working on the Helix platform and it's led to where we are now. So that's the short version of the years that I have spent doing this. Yeah, yeah. So like Helix, necessity was the mother of invention and that is absolutely true in the terms of this service that we're running now. So. Did you have a bunch of dial-up modems back in the day and some I, <laughs> I will admit I had dial-up modems. So yeah. we literally, I'm from in Northport, New York, anybody who is familiar with Long Island area, we had a, an amazing office with a loft and brick walls and everything in this 150 year old building in Northport where the phone company thought we were insane for asking for that many copper lines in the building. And we had all of our modems lined up in 1996. Boy, oh my making gosh. the noises. Yeah, yeah. But then we went national with a service called Mac Connect. Because if you remember back in those days, Apple was on its last leg. There was, they oh, were right. out of cash. They were close to death. And no internet service providers really knew anything about the Macintosh, but we did because we were all Mac users. So we started a service that sold only to Mac users. And uh, yeah, that was a, a slight bit of genius at the time. And it, and it worked out really, really well. Um, you know, and then Apple started making a comeback and, and there you go. But yeah, we were in that. So we were in the ISP game before we were the hosting. Hmm. Yeah, back in the day. Very so, interesting. Very yeah. cool. So what does Helix stand for? H what is there a reason nope. for it doesn't stand for a damn thing it just sounded like a really cool name <laughs> okay. yeah yeah we, we needed a name and i'm like yeah that's a good that's a really cool name so i mean <laughs> helix is kind of its own platform there's a whole lot of code that runs it so we said i oh, will kind of name it as if it's a an entity or a, a, you know and we, we called it helix so there you go perfect isn't it uh isn't it somewhere in the, oh. the dna and the genome isn't that what that is that dna is a double heel right a helix is that and dna is yeah. a double helix but i don't know it just we brainstormed a bunch of names with our creative people and 
I liked Helix and I own the place. So Helix it was. There you go. <laughs> in related news, there's a great song called from probably 1988 called Deep Cuts the Knife by a band named Helix. I'm so, going to have to listen to that. Now. Oh. I, 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 have, I have no choice. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Okay. Deep Cuts the Knife, man. That's what's up. Oh, that's cool. So yeah. tell us about your, we, we talked about this, but I think a lot of people don't realize, um, I'm sure Terry, this is new to you. Like, why would you want to have, um, Terry, are you a WordPress? Is your site on WordPress? Know. Yeah, yeah that's what I thought. Okay. And um, why would we want to have your service? Like, tell us about your service compared sure. to what else is out there. So here's the deal. I mean, like you, so Terry, you were on WordPress and I, Janet, your site is a WordPress site, right? So, mm -hmm. I mean, a huge portion of the internet of the, of the web now is based on WordPress. So if you're not with a Wix or a Squarespace or one of those type of services, it's a really good chance your website is a WordPress site. So WordPress is super awesome and it's like really mature and it was built to be the self-publishing content management system, which it is, and it doesn't have standing job of that. But you know, the old adage, actually um the old adage applies like do you want secure easy or or fast you know you, get, you can't get them all so the biggest issue with wordpress is that while it's really easy for people to use to maintain their own content for blogging and things like that it also means that it's got some holes in it here and there um, and so those were the holes that we found they were mainly security issues there were performance issues and anybody who runs wordpress sona has run into this if your site gets busy at any given time so those problems are inherent in every WordPress installation because of what WordPress is. So if you want to just use your mouse to, to run an entire website and know nothing about what's underneath that, there's a little bit of a price to pay for that. Convenience comes at a cost of security and sometimes performance. So the difference between hosting your website at you know your typical $10 a month host and hosting with somebody like us is that we will make sure that none of those things that happen to WordPress happen. So WordPress needs to be updated and patched. It, it really should have an acceleration layer underneath it. It needs to be backed up. It, there's a bunch of stuff that has to happen to actually run WordPress beyond just writing your blog articles and putting pictures up. And so we came up with a platform that automatically does those things. We don't, we're not sitting here doing them for you. Helix as a platform actually performs those tasks automatically 24 seven while you're sleeping. So that's what we bring to that. If you've got a, a WordPress site that you've been bitten by a couple of times, you know, like Google tells people don't go there because the site's been compromised or your web host tells you, well, your site is on, un it's unlimited hosting, but not that unlimited. And they shut you down because you got kind of busy for a week for some reason, because you were mentioned at a conference. We take care of all that stuff. You don't have to worry about it. You just, you just do your content. We do everything else. So that's, that's what we're doing here. And that's why people who choose us love that. We're not for everybody because some people just need $5 a month hosting, but some people really just want all that technical stuff handled. And that's where we come in. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, there's yeah. a lot. Well, and the other thing is I don't think people, you know, they throw up a website and they think I'm done now, you know, I mean, yeah. and, and it's, it's always ever changing, just like Facebook marketing and you know, it's ever changing. Right. The internet just keep, continues moving, 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 moving. Right. And uh, yeah. And there's these dumb hackers out there that I don't even get, you know, I mean, why, why in the world do they want to hack our sites, but they are out there. So yeah. It's, there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we find that all the time. The biggest issue that we run into is for people who bring their sites here. Like we always tell people WordPress isn't like, what is like the Ronco rotisserie. It's not set it and forget it. It's not the George Foreman grill. Like yeah. WordPress is a living, breathing thing. It has a huge ecosystem and it's constantly changing. So they'll bring us a site. Oh, my site has been hacked. We want you guys to host it now. And it's running a version of WordPress that's three years old or a year old because no one's been updating it. And there were like plugins and other services that you can buy to do that stuff for you. But, but why do you know, it's better if the hosting platform has that baked in already. So we did that. We don't Got we it. Want, will not allow a site to be outdated here. It's just not permitted. We're going to keep you current, whether you like it or not. <laughs> so I want to point out a fascinating lesson here. Yeah. Um, we had Asha on the show probably two and a half years ago, and she used the line, your niche, niche, niche will make you rich, rich, rich. And so what I heard from Drew so far is at one point he said, yeah, we're doing this stuff. 
But if we did it for this real tiny group of users that have Macs, we can own and dominate the space. Mm -hmm. And what I heard from Drew today is, yeah, we're doing this stuff, but if we took a select group of WordPress users, we could own and dominate the space. Is that is that kind of been your your business growth model? You look at areas of opportunity that maybe other people are overlooking, and you're like, we're gonna just zone in right here. Um, yeah, kind of. Um, I like to go where other people are not, but admittedly, we're certainly not the only ones to think of managed WordPress hosting. So we do have competitors who are, you know, very well funded and have been in this for three years already. But the difference is I usually will take those niches and really scale them down because in the end, on a personal level, I'm not in the business of running a hundred million dollar company. I kind of started to go down that road in the first dot com boom with the Mac based service and I don't ever want to be there again. So <laughs> we really run a very boutique type operation where for us hosting a thousand WordPress sites is extravagantly successful. Whereas if you're GoDaddy, a thousand sites doesn't even keep your lights on. So right. here we like we, we, we get to do all that cool technical stuff, but we're not really typical kind of nerdy dudes. Like I like you, I like human beings. So we sort of, <laughs> we sort of enjoy, and I, I know I'm going to catch heat for that, but, but it's been at my stock and trade for many, many years. And the greatest compliment we're ever paid is never, Hey, what a great service, but it is it's, Hey, you guys are easy to talk to. You're not like tech guys, which we're not. So Got we're it. incredibly competent, but we also like to deal with people. So we're happy to have a personal relationship with our customers as well. So that's the differentiating factor always in everything I've ever done. Mm -hmm. so I'm, I'm going to keep doing it that way. How do you go to market? Do you go to market through partners and associates and people that are in the space and web designers and people that are working there and they, mm -hmm. or do you, are you direct to consumer or is it a little bit of both? Um, it's a little bit of both. We don't have, I don't have a hundred million dollars in venture money behind me. You know, this business is an outgrowth of a 20 something year old business. So we're organically funded. I don't have a $10 million first quarter 2020 advertising budget. Mm -hmm. So therefore most of our Helix clients were outgrowths of old clients. It's just the word of mouth that I've had from being in this business for many, many years. And when one web designer uses the service and sort of loves it, they will invariably tell another web designer. So that has been our stock and trade right now. If you're in the business of maintaining people's websites, we're kind of a hit once people find us because it takes those people out of the nuts and bolts of keeping their client sites running and it lets them just be creative people. So selling into that, that vertical there, the creative space, people who are designing and maintaining websites, but do not ever want to know about WordPress patches. You're like, hey, we'll take care of that for you over here. And we just appear to be way better at it than the much larger companies because when they call, they might talk to me and I own the company and that won't ever change. Like we're not scaling to the point where you don't see me again and there's people with headsets in India. Never. It's never going to be that. So I, don't, I don't want that. You don't want that. Yeah. I don't want that. I'm, I could be, I, look, on a personal level, and I think this, this maybe speak to people who are listening and trying to grow a business. Not everybody aspires to be Elon Musk, you know. If you do, that's great. But you can also be like really, really successful, even financially with, you don't need $50 million of personal wealth to be super successful financially. Mm -hmm. So that's really what drives me a lot on a personal level. I'm not that money driven, to be honest with you. So Love it. cool. Yeah, we have a good yeah. time here. Yeah. Right. Fun is uh, fun is our watchword. He, he reminds me so much of Tom Lawrence from Lawrence Technical Systems, who we had come on. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That was a podcast a while ago. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's Just interesting. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, uh, maybe, you know. maybe we're separated at birth. Who knows? <laughs> you, you could be. Tom's a super great guy who uh, has been in the technology space and built a YouTube following of about 60,000 people. Wow. Most talking about firewalls and, and yeah. all the stuff his company actually does. But he goes out and does a demonstration on how to do it. And, and you know, YouTube's writing him a check for three or $5,000 every month at this point, which is nice. crazy cool. Yeah. And, and then he's getting clients as a result of, you know, because ultimately it, we all know that you can give somebody the recipe to how to do something, but that doesn't mean they're going to do it. Right. So, or they even want to, no, even, they might not want to. That's exactly uh, right. Yeah. You know what? Yeah. What you do drew 80 plus percent of the population shouldn't be wasting their time doing that. Doesn't want to do. No, it doesn't want yeah, to. Yeah. They don't want to, they shouldn't be, you know, there's certain things. Yeah. That's not an area that, 
um, you know, yeah. it's a waste of time. You know, I mean, I had to be really cognizant of the fact that this is a mature marketplace, though, because if this was 10, 15 years ago, I would not be able to sell the service. Because at the time, you, you were in the beginning of this technology where everybody heard, oh, this WordPress thing, even back when it was called something different in its beginning, that, like, oh, this just means it's self-service. I could just take care of all the stuff myself. Yeah. And it's taking 10, 12 years of the marketplace for people to learn the hard lessons. Like, yeah, for some people, it's self-service and they could run a five-year-old WordPress and it's fine. But for other people, like, oh, it is more than that. And I needed the marketplace to mature enough to teach people that so that we would have a, a role. It's, it's yeah. Crazy. Yeah. Well, and let me ask you, so there's a couple things that have changed on the internet. Um, Just a few. You handle GDPR. We do. Like, we don't necessarily do it directly, but we are involved in so many people who are involved in site design that, yes, it's a real, it's a real issue. So we can sometimes offer advice like that just because we're, we're connected to it accidentally. Got it. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So we were able to, to kind of get a grip on some of that stuff because of what our clients had to go through with it. And, and there's was- a new thing happening right now. What is that? You know, there's a new thing that just came out too that um, what the web designer that I've been working with has been sending out a lot of information on that. And it's, well, it's been the last six months um, right. where you've got to, do you know what I'm talking about at all? It's um, very, very uh, important to be like, for instance, on all your pictures, you should have alt text. Oh yeah, that's accessibility and design. Those are huge, 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 huge issues. Actually, I just went to a, there's a meetup group here on Long Island, some, uh, some really creative people a company called Millennium Communications. They develop tremendous web properties. They're, they're awesome. And they are sponsoring a meetup group here on Long Island that focuses on accessible web design. It's a fascinating, fascinating field. Now, we're not directly involved in design, but there's some technology that we can implement in the platform that helps that stuff. Things like text-to-speech automatically and things of that nature. But um, yeah, it's, it's a real, real issue. There was a, a lawsuit bought not too long ago. disabilities, right? This yes, is- absolutely. Yeah, Aside yeah. from just... You know, aside from just being a good human being and a good corporate citizen and trying to be as inclusive as we can be, which I think we should all do, there are legal implications for that too. So as, yeah, as crazy as this sounds, we've literally started to see lawsuits appear in most states right now. In the state I live in, there's, there's a zillion of them because it's New York, but people are literally bringing suit against companies for being unable to access their websites. And I'm not talking about just the Ford Motor Company. Like there are suits being brought against very small businesses too. I've heard that. I've yeah. heard that too. And that's just yeah. scary. It's a, real, so. it's a real thing. Yeah. It's mm. a real thing. But, mm. but here's what's interesting about that. I'll just take 10 more seconds for people who are interested. It goes way beyond alt image tags and things of that nature. There are text size limitations. There are contrast limitations. There are guidelines out there that every designer can follow. Here's the issue. They can take away a lot of the, the wow of some of the designs that you see on the web. So that is the pushback that I've always seen in the design community. Well, and how many people are culprits right now? How many websites out there are culprits to be getting this fine? Probably a whole lot of them. (laughs) I mean, probably ours. (laughs) All all of them. Yeah, yeah, it's not good. Um, I mean, uh, larger companies have full teams of people who are dedicated to doing that you know, to, uh, to, you know, to making sure their web properties are accessible and they don't run into that le- that problem, but probably 95% of the sites out there, no, no one's ever thought about it. It's just real. Yeah. yeah. I, had a, I had a client of mine a couple of years ago that was really focused on this issue and saying it was going to be a problem because they'd already seen uh, court cases of people yeah. losing money because of this accessibility issue. It's crazy. Absolutely. It is a real issue. And the Americans with Disabilities Act pretty much covers this. The courts have already started to recognize that. Like, oh yeah, this is an ADA issue. Uh-huh. And that's, that's a, in the end, a civil rights issue. So there is liability to be had. Like, you, this is a thing you must be aware of if you have a website. I'll get you, I'll get you introduced to these guys. I don't, I, I don't know if, how much WordPress they actually do. The company is Core PHP. Okay. But they do a lot of web development, so. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure they're, they're probably knee deep in this at this point. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, Yeah, absolutely. Wow. Wow. Um, Yeah. So there's some technical stuff we could do to address that. And we're going to start looking at uh, Amazon Web Services. And I forget who they worked with. It was another company that originated it, but AWS is now rolling it out. So it's the thing that AWS Poly is their text-to-speech engine. 
that or it's on, a, on AWS, on Amazon Web Services. And so there's WordPress plugins now that we can automatically add to every site to, to automatically start to read pages to people that are visually impaired. So we're, we're going to start to look at things like doing ah. things like that automatically. So you won't even have to think about it. We'll just add all the accessibility tools, at least underneath. It might be up to you to implement them in the design, but we will just build them in for you automatically. So it's a thing you have to do, and we will. Mm -hmm. that's cool yeah that that may i mean yeah it's just you know there's so much to think about with business already like you know even just getting a flipping blog post up is a lot of work you know <laughs> it is <laughs> so much <laughs> it is but yet then there's all this behind the scenes it's kind of crazy yeah yeah and i think people forget some of the time that it takes to do that stuff too i'm sure that you know people that are listening to you i'm guessing are in the business of growing businesses so they're they're really involved in marketing and, the, and their web presence is part of that. And then a lot of people don't understand, don't realize like, wow, that takes a whole lot more time than I thought it was going to. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. exactly it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So how do you, how do you characterize your business? Do you, do you call it WordPress hosting? What do you, what do you, what do you label it as when you, what's your, what's your elevator pitch? What do you tell people you do? Well, so the elevator pitch really is, I mean, when we're selling it to the creative space, we came up with, I, I can't take credit for this, a really very bright marketing guy by the name of Mark Schaefer, who you guys may know from online. Oh, yeah. Mark, Mark, Mark Schaefer, came up, yeah. 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 Mark came up with a great tagline for us, Helix frees your time so you can free your mind. So that is the one line version of that. Um, it is a little bit complicated. So we, we always say this is fully managed WordPress hosting faster, easier, more secure than WordPress has ever been. And that's, that's the 10 second speech right there. So it means that if you don't even know what those things are, you are likely not going to be a customer, but that's okay. I understand that one day you may know what those things are and then you may be a potential customer and we will welcome you, but we can't be all things to all people, nor can I think any business. So we've had to know who our potential customers are and target the pitch, the elevator speech for that. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Does that make any sense? Or am I like doomed to fail? <laughs> no, man. It's, it, listen, if you're, and this is where most people get it wrong, right? They, they think that they have to create a message that's going to appeal to and resonate with everyone. And the reality is your message should dot your intended audience right between the eyes mm -hmm. and fly over the rest of the people's head because they're not your audience anyway. So why do right. you want to communicate with them? Right. The people are like, oh my God, I need that. And yes. that's all you need to reach. And when they are in the mode, if you are running a business and your web presence has had issues like this, then you know, oh my God, I need this. So you're probably looking for this. It Love makes it. it a lot easier to sell that way. Love it. Yeah. Heck yeah. yeah. Because... There's a lot of freedom in not needing 100,000 customers. A lot. Well, it's just like your computer breaking down. You know, when do you, yeah, you, you're, you know, I mean, it's yeah. a similar thing. Your computer breaks you go look for it, then you're in search for it, and then you think right. about it, you know, but... Or, or insurance. You don't, the, you don't think about your insurance until you need it. True, true. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So, so lots of, yeah, a lot, makes a lot of sense, but, you know, that's what we're here talking about today is to create that awareness so that people can understand it before it, the, it actually happens to them. Yeah. That's kind yeah. of the key. I mean, if you catch anything before it happens, you're better off you're much better off than if you wait till it happens and then it has to be fixed. Cause usually in the end it will cost you more money it, down it the road. Like does. if your site got hacked, yeah. I'm assuming you got to clean all that up and it, you know, yeah. it always does. And so then mm -hmm. that's so funny. One of the things that was happening was that my site was defaced. Like, can you help me? We got to clean it up. And we thought, well, let's just keep it from happening to begin with, which would be way better. Mm -hmm. And it means that there, there's a slightly different way to work with WordPress when you host with us, but once we get that onboarding process done, and I'm telling you, it's, it's 20 minutes of a little bit of instruction. It's not a bunch. And you get into that groove and everything is fine. And the benefit far outweighs any other inconvenience that, that there may be. And it's very minor. But, you know, there's a few things. But not everybody needs us or wants to pay for us. So I get that. But there are some things for your people who are listening. You know, if, if you don't, you're not in the budget right now to have a, a $50 or $60 a month WordPress host, which we are. And we're in line with our competitors. But there are mm -hmm. a few things that, you know, if you want, we can talk about that people can take from this without having sure. to hire people like us. So I think the first thing that I would say is you just please know that your WordPress website is not set it and forget it forever. Janet, you already talked about that. 
Mm -hmm. The second thing is you must keep it backed up every single night because when the site gets hacked and it will, if you don't pay attention to it, then the easiest way to get back in business is to just say, let's restore from last night's backup. And the third thing I would say is watch it every day. So if you have a web presence, I don't care if you're in $5 hosting somewhere at some provider, that's fine. Log on to your site every morning, make it part of your morning routine. Do a Google search mm -hmm. for your URL and make sure that Google isn't telling people to not go to your website because if you are backing up daily, but that only lasts for a week and you don't know for 10 days that your site has been defaced, well, you got a problem. So if you just take your business, yeah. a grand total of maybe 40 minutes a week, a week to pay attention to your website, you can avoid a lot of the problems that created my business. I don't want you to eliminate all of them because I like a business having a business, right. but, <laughs> but, it, but in the end, you know, if you're not in of the mind that you think you don't, sure. you don't want a 50 or $60 dollar month web host, then there are things you can do to, to keep you from needing people like us. So I just went and looked at mine. I have one WordPress update required. I have seven theme updates required right. and I have seven, um, crud, what was the other one? Plugin had, updates. Yeah, I have seven plugin updates. So I have a right. total of 15 updates that are required or requested. I don't know if required is the right term, but that, yeah. that's what's going on in my little WordPress world. And there are some ways you, you can set WordPress to do some of those updates automatically. That's part of WordPress for the last couple of years, but then you have to be paying attention. So just like anything else, if you buy a, if you, if your computer is 10 years old, at some point your programs will stop working just because Windows gets updated and Mac OS gets updated. WordPress is the same way. So that's the other thing that people, that's the resistance sometimes. Like, well, I designed the site in 2015. I paid a lot of money for it. I don't want to spend any money for a web designer now. So if I do updates, things might break. And the answer to that is that's true. They might, but it's just a part of doing business. You can't, keep your website frozen in 2014 because you don't want it to break. It's ultimately going to break far worse than it did if you tried to keep it updated. So pay then or pay later, either way, you know, in a way. So I think that's important for people to understand. Oh, for sure. Got yeah. it. Yeah. No, yeah. I agree. I agree. Well, good. Well, this was great. I think it's just awareness. I mean, I think yeah. that's the biggest thing. Uh, you know, Terry, did this enlighten you? <laughs> <laughs> um, this falls under the category of stuff Terry doesn't really think too much about. <laughs> I knew it. I knew it's it. Good. <laughs> That's good. what I see. And I, see, we, we, the business growth time site and my site are handled. So I've been taking care of those for a long time. I don't yeah. take care of Terry's site. So there I'm not. <laughs> Was that a disclaimer? I, your your co-host just had to do a disclaimer for you. That's never good. <laughs> Ow, the bus. Ow, I, I'm out. telling you, really. <laughs> hey, I, I want you right now, go to business growth time and let's look. I want it. I want proof. Oh, you want me to look at it right now? Oh, you can do it without even having access. Well, oh, no, I can't do that. No, I want, I, I want Janet. If I can figure out how to look, Janet can figure out. Oh, I know how to look. I know already, how to look. She already knows. Man. That's super so. funny. That's super funny. No, we have somebody that does the updates all the time. So we, we are good. Uh, that's what we've talked about. Just because yep. they say they're doing it, does it mean they're doing it? Right, Drew? Tell her. That's not how that, that works. Well, um, I'm not going to, like, look, I, you know, my customers are super valuable to me. I'm not going to name any names, but we do have people who have, who have been in that boat. Like, yeah, my clients are paying me to do updates, but the guy I had doing it, you know, he's been sick or he got married. He's been away. We haven't done it in two months. Can you help us out? That's great. There's not one update needed on business growth time. <laughs> Good job, Janet. <laughs> <laughs> but so it's business, businessgrowthtime.com, right? Yes. Uh, yep. So you want to exactly. do a little experiment, like super quickly for two seconds? Sure. Yeah, I do know. Or maybe see. not. No, oh no, boy. You, Let's you, see. Maybe not. We'll we'll talk about it off the air if it is a problem. Oh yeah, we got the, we got a, we got a little thing to talk about. So. <laughs> <laughs> we have issues. Yeah. Nothing bad. Uh, Nothing bad. Listen, man, I had hair. It would be bad. that's how old that site is. Is it focus? It says. XML RPC server, except post request only. You got to lock that down. So like, that's the stuff that we do for you automatically. You don't even know what that is. Nope. I'll nope. tell you what to do. It's all right. I'll that's tell you what to do when we hang up. 
Yeah, 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 that's cool. That's all. Awesome. See that? So <laughs> that was here's worth the price of admission right there, right? Yeah, there. That's a great way to reach out to you. So let's talk about how people can reach out and, like, you know, you, you just did a little quick check, and mm. they can you can tell them something based on just looking at their site. It sounds like. Yeah, what I did is it's an indicator. That, that indicator. Has, exactly. Yeah, it's an indicator. It doesn't mean that it's a disaster for you, but it's an indicator. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. No, um, that's cool. That's cool. So yeah. what, let's uh, tell everybody the best place to reach out to you. Well, we can, well, if you want to get to, well, first thing I would say is go to our website, which is I am helix.com. I A M H E L I X.com. Okay. Um, there's a contact form there. If you want to drop us a note, that's fine. We've got a bunch of blog articles and stuff on there that talk about some of these things. Um, that's great. You can always get me, uh, what's, I don't even know what my social media is anymore, but on Instagram, Helix Drew, on Twitter, Helix Drew, H-A-L-A-X-D-R-E-W, drop me a note there, that's fine. I'm happy to answer questions. You don't even have to be a customer. We just like to make friends, so I'm good with all that stuff. Let's start yep. our website, iamhelix.com. We'll be happy to hear from you guys. Beautiful. Awesome. That's Great. Fine and easy to remember. Absolutely. Uh, cuts the knife song. Yeah. Which I, I, I see you sent it, so now I'm going to have to watch it. <laughs> I know. We have to see yeah, Terry's this. Yeah, everybody has to look up the 80s song. We'll put that in the show notes. We'll yes. put the YouTube video in the show notes. There you go. For a that Helix. Was, that was a regular part of business growth time when we first started. Janet and I, as I mentioned at the top of the show, were classmates. We graduated in 1989. <laughs> in the, when God, did you keep be, aging me? <laughs> Janet, I, I graduated in 89. Janet graduated in 2012. Uh, of course. <laughs> Obviously. Way younger. Um, <laughs> but we used to ask people, what's their favorite 80s song? And you're you're about that same timeline, Drew. What, 1984. Uh, 1984. I'm so. fine. I got five years on you guys. So. Oh, so. Okay. But you, still, you were an I 80s think, child, kind of. I you was know. totally a child of the 80s. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that could be the answer, right? You could have just named the Van Halen album, mic drop, and just walk off the show. Right? <laughs> they, I was a big Van Halen fan. That's very true. You got you me nailed. Be. You're in those. I was, it was right in the middle of that. It was right in the middle of that. Standing in front of the house under the basketball court, the street light. That's all we would listen to is Van Halen for like <laughs> all summer. It was great. <laughs> so it's like I would do that tonight, just by by myself, just to see what the neighbors say. <laughs> Boombox. <laughs> if you don't go, if you don't Facebook Live it, it didn't happen. I, that's exactly right. That's true. Oh, that. <laughs> anyway. oh, that's awesome. Well, Van yeah. Halen, there you go. I haven't heard that name in a long time. So. <laughs> that's a great way to end it. So we are, uh, you can find all past podcasts on businessgrowthtime.com slash podcast. And hopefully there's nothing wrong with our site. And you can also go to businessgrowthtime.xyz and that will take you directly to our Facebook group. Appreciate you coming on, Drew. And this was enlightening for many. So thanks yeah, a lot. A little fun to talk to and I appreciate the invite. Thank you very much. Thank Bye. you. Have a good one. All right. See you in the next one.